you come back from seeing somebody in your family, you come back in one of these morbid, middle-aged moods. And I'm tired of finding you on the goddamn telephone every time I turn around. I'm tired of being an accessory in your life. And I'm tired of pretending to write this dumb book about my maverick days and the great early years of television. Every goddamn executive fired from a network in the last 20 years has written this dumb book about the great early years of television. And nobody wants a dumb damn goddamn book about the early days of television. Terrific, Max, terrific. Maybe you can start a whole new career as an actor. It's the truth. After living with you for six months, I'm turning into one of your scripts. Well, this is not a script, Diana. There's some real, actual life going on here. I went to visit my wife today because she's in a state of depression. So depressed that my daughter flew all the way from Seattle to be with her. And I feel lousy about that. I feel lousy about the pain that I've caused my wife and my kids. I feel guilty and conscience-stricken and all of those things that you think sentimental, but which my generation calls simple human decency. I miss my home because I'm beginning to get scared shitless. Because all of a sudden it's closer to the end than it is the beginning. And death is suddenly a perceptible thing to me with definable features. You're dealing with a man that has primal doubts, Diana. And you've got to cope with it. I'm not some guy discussing male menopause on the Barbara Walter show. I'm the man that you presumably love. I'm part of your life. I live here. I'm real. You can't switch to another station. Well, what exactly is it you want me to do? I just want you to love me. I just want you to love me, primal doubts and all. You understand that, don't you? I don't know how to do that. I'll be with you in a minute, Matt. 